Australia, things are about to get wild and cruising will never be the same again. But then what would you expect from the ultimate disruptor? Whether it's music, airlines or space travel, Richard Branson has never been afraid to challenge the status quo. But as David Koch discovered, at 73, the cheeky billionaire is in a reflective mood. And what he has to say is both thoughtful and very thought-provoking. This reminds me of uh, there was a wonderful uh, aviator called Sir Freddy Laker, and when I got yeah. to, well, he, he had prostate cancer, and he told me, Richard, you know, you're 40 years old, and um, you've really got to go to the doctor, uh, get him to put his finger and um, <laughs> uh, check you out. He said, just but <laughs> make sure he doesn't have both hands on your shoulder when he does it. <laughs> <laughs> Come for a seat, Thank you. How's your morning been? <laughs> uh, been good? Been, uh, very, 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 very nice. <laughs> Thank oh. you. <laughs> right, now I could end up with a massage with this. Thing. <laughs> Thank you. You never buy things. You always create from scratch. That's true. Why? I think creating things from scratch means you can you're not you're not inheriting all this sort of uh, history and problems that come with with buying something. If you create something from scratch, you can, generally speaking, get it right. What are you passionate about outside of the business and family? I'm passionate about um, creating things that will um, make make a difference in the world because I've I think I've learned the skills of uh, creating businesses, and, uh, but. Uh, now I create organisations to tackle different different issues in this world. So whether it's uh, climate change, whether it's conflict resolution issues, whether it's drug reform, whether it's trying to abolish the death penalty, um, uh, you know, whether it's sort of monitoring uh, the planetary boundaries on the of the Earth. Three, two, one. So you must have a really strong value set that you guide your life by. I hope so. I mean, I think one's reputation in life is all we have. And that's it, really. For more than five decades, Richard Branson has been captain of the Virgin brand. His often high-risk, high-profile stunts have built an empire and made him billions. His latest venture is cruise ships. Now, this is called Richard's Lounge. He's the familiar face of Virgin. Oh, Hi, everybody. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> yes, welcome, 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 welcome. Um, if anybody wants to take the elevator, I'm afraid I do my... Uh, we, do your exercise, <laughs> yep. But he actually doesn't run any of the businesses. He sort of franchises his name to each of them, and that's how he makes his money. Currently, the Virgin Group consists of 300 companies, employs 30,000 people, across 30 countries. Australians are great cruisers, but we normally get the really old ships. 
<laughs> that the other cruise liners sort of send down from Europe. This is a brand new ship, is it? Yeah. Uh, I think it'll knock, knock Australia right between the eyes. This is the Resilient Lady, the ship that will be based in Australia. 60,000 tonnes, 17 storeys and no kids or grandkids. You're beautiful. What, what I wanted to do was create a cruise company that was like an Abramovich yacht, you know, for people to be able to go and use with the absolute best restaurants in the world on it, the best entertainment, the best crew, the most fun, fun crew. You know, they're just a, a, a cruise company with lots of magic. Oh, the servers are ready to retrain us. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I was actually just about oh, to say, no, we train our servers very well. No, no. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I'm, I'm, I'm just being trained by your team. <laughs> We're going to have to get you some additional training, but yeah, that's OK, no problem at all. It's... I was looking over the shoulder of one of your staff reading an email from you when we got off the ship, and there was a list of things that needed to be improved. I felt a bit rude looking over his shoulder. But is that... Do you do that... When you go to every business? Yes. No, I... I, I Are you a list-type person that you'll say, right... I'm not... Is... I, I'm, I'm, I am a list-type person, but it's more I'm a, a detail person. Um, so... And I just try to explain that. I think that there's... Most airlines are average. Their managing directors most likely are flying on a private plane and they're not actually flying on, their, on the airline and experiencing it. Have a good flight. Uh, most cruise ships are average because I suspect, you know, the, the chief executive is not out there experiencing it. secret shopper for your own businesses M yeah. must drive your executives mad, does it? I suspect a little bit. The thing I've always been absolutely blown away about my dad is that it doesn't matter whether he's speaking to a president or whether it's a taxi driver in a foreign country and we've just landed, he gives them the same amount of time as an individual and as a human being. You know, it's just life. I mean, he's been doing what he's been doing since he was 16. So for him, his passion is his work, his work is his life, his life is his adventure. I, I, can't, I can't separate Virgin from my dad or from our family or from life. You know, it's just, we were just brought up with it. I 
is his new luxury resort on Mallorca Island in Spain. 25 years ago, I was standing uh, just, just, just uh, up, up there looking down at an old ruin, which was here, and looking at three miles of this beautiful, pristine coastline with uh, 15,000 olive groves and a vineyard and just something which was uh, breathtakingly beautiful. And I decided that, you know, it'd be incredible to try to rescue the ruin and, and uh, turn it into a, a, a small boutique um, hotel. The whole team are really proud of what they've created. It's really lovely. Hello, Holly. Can you hear me? Oh, it's good, isn't it? On the outside, you're this flamboyant, almost playboy-type image, but you've been with the same woman for 48 years. I mean, it's, it, it's a relationship based on trust. You know, she'll have, she, her, her way of expressing it is she'll let the lead out a bit and then <laughs> she knows exactly when to hook it back again. And so, you know, we can, we can, we can have fun, we can dance with other people, um, but, but, but we got, you, you've got that basic trust and, and, you know, I just wouldn't want to cause any hurt and she wouldn't want to cause any hurt and, and so it's worked, um, so we've been lucky. <laughs> While the world loved his high-risk adventures, his kids were paying the price. My dad's going off in a balloon and I don't know if he's going to come home. That's a big impact, is that? I hadn't, I hadn't realised until you mentioned it. Richard Branson is known for his success, stunts and sense of adventure. But every time he puts his life on the line, his family, especially his son, was paying the price. They were terrified at the prospect of losing him, but never told him. Now Richard Branson is about to learn the confronting truth. You know, my dad's going off and trying to break world records and he's an adventurer and, you know, and on the other side, just my dad's going off in a balloon and I don't know if he's going to come home. Talking to your son, Sam, the love he expressed for you and Joan was quite extraordinary. But then he said he could have lost you at such a young age. It's taken me till my you know, late thirties and and quite a lot of personal processing to kind of realise, you know, the, the challenges that that brought for me. Sam, where are you? Oh, hello, Sam. And people expected him to die at times in those balloons. Yeah. I remember sneaking into his capsule before he went off, leaving a note saying, Dad, I love you, please come home. That's a big impact, is that? I hadn't, I hadn't realised until you mentioned it. I think, and you notice I'm talking a lot here, trying to, trying to analyse, analyse how selfish I was. I think the, uh, I think the fact that I had um, a wife who was so wonderful with the kids, and who I knew would, you know, would would, would be able to cope cope with bringing them up, made made me feel less selfish. Mm. So I know some people watching this program would think, well, what a selfish person. Other, others maybe, maybe will understand, but it's, it's an, uh, but I think if, 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 we don't, if we don't try to push the limits, I think the world would be a poorer place. The balloon jetted at more than 200 kilometres per hour across the Atlantic Ocean. But as the balloon touched down just north of the Irish coast, it soared back up to 1,000 feet. Richard and co-pilot, Pear Lindstrode, were in serious trouble. The journey ended dramatically when Richard and Pear had no option but to leap from their balloon into the ocean. Facing death in a crisis situation, you just feel 
enormous, enormous loneliness. And were you scared? Not scared per se. I was determined to, uh, as I always am in crises like that, to do everything I could to um, to get out of the situation. You know, I scribbled a note that I loved them, loved them very much, and then put my mind to the parachute jump in, into the cold North Sea. And I remember standing on top of the balloon, looking down at the swirling cloud, clouds below, um, realizing it was the last few seconds of my life, most likely, because, you know, parachuting into a freezing sea, the chance of survival was almost nil. I'm four years older than my brother, so I remember always sort of being the stronger one. My brother would be in pieces crying all the time, and I remember trying to be like, like trying to be the strong one, even though inside I was in turmoil about him about to do these big trips. The lifeboat has picked up Richard Branson, and the helicopter has taken him off, and he's receiving medical attention. We've all been lost in the chaos. Being affected to that extent by my ballooning and boating, I hadn't, I hadn't realised until you mentioned it, and um, um, and. Um, Anyway, hopefully he's, hopefully he's over it now. I'm now an adventurer and part of my life. You know, spend time in the Arctic and go off and, and climb mountains. And, and so, I, I, although I can see there's an element of it which is like, how could you do that with two small children? I'm, you know, a dad of two kids and I just couldn't do something that was that dangerous. I'll be right there when you're falling down. Rest your mind. You know, I get this drive and desire to explore and how important that is and that quote that my dad loves saying, which is, what is it? The, um... The, the brave may not live forever, but the cautious do not live at all. And I believe that. A fascinating man. And you can find an extended version of our interview with Richard Branson at sevennews.com.au.